Yes. Hello, welcome back. Hello again. Could you have your breakfast? No, actually I didn't, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I just had the coffee. I usually have a proper breakfast after. After I teach. Don't feel sick when you use computer with a with an empty stomach. When I use it, I feel headache. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll get grumpy if I don't eat. <laughs> but it's because it's so early here, and uh, I just I, I can't eat so early. I could, I guess, but I'd rather eat after. I have coffee and some biscuits, and that's about it. It lasts me for a couple of hours, and then I have you know proper breakfast. Um, until lunch, you know. So, um, do you usually cook Australian food or Bosnian or English food? Oh, uh, we have all sorts. <laughs> you know, that's really. Um, luckily, I'm not. I'm not fussy when it comes to food. So yeah, when Sakina cooks or whenever we prepare something, it's. Um, sometimes Indian, you know, sometimes European, sometimes Bosnian, whatever it is, you know. And uh, <clears throat> my mom has taught her some nice recipes, so I'm glad she, you know, she could prepare something nice mm. that my mom used to, you know, prepare. Uh, I'm sure you like you like your mom's cooking as well. Yes, I mm. do. Yeah. Do you have any traditional food that you can cook? That I can cook? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have. I, uh, I actually, I, not really taught, you know, my wife, but she already uh, sort of learnt it from my mum, but she couldn't perfect it, so I was sort of, you know, helping and teaching her how to make it. You know, burek. Yes. Burek. Yeah, that's what I was teaching her. But we have it slightly different compa compared to the Turks, I think. Uh, how how does how is how do you usually make it, or how does your mom make it? Is it in layers, or does it come in like a sort of um, looks like a snail in a way, Jeremy? Yeah. Yes. I, what shape is it? I guess shape is is not important. Sometimes they make small parts like pastries, like mm -hmm. a snail, but like piece piece by piece but sometimes they mm -hmm. put the whole uh, dough in yeah. a whole trap in, in a big big snail in the whole pan isn't it yeah yeah sometimes they just put one top of another without snail shape just you put yes. like paper you put one one layer of uh, dough then you put the ingredients then you put another one they also use some kind of uh, liquid with egg and maybe some butter or some kind of things yeah. uh, to put the between layers. True. Yeah, I usually I like the meat, the meat one. Yeah, hello, Koro. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good How are you morning. going? We're just talking about some. Um, some uh, specialties in in, uh, in Turkish kitchen and the Bos in the Bosnian kitchen, uh, burek uh, or burek. Mm -hmm. How you pronounce it? How do you pronounce it in, in, in Turkish? Burek. We say burek. Burek, yes. Um, yeah, there, there's many. I mean, my, the way my mom makes it, she makes different different type, different ingredients. There's one with spinach. Yeah. Then there's another one with cheese, cottage cheese, which is really nice, one of my favorite ones. Uh, then you have just uh, potatoes, you know, I mean, it has also spices inside, like yeah. seasoning, pepper and all that, and a bit of onion. Uh, then what else is there? There's one made out of uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin, really? Yeah, I think pumpkin, yeah. There are, there are quite a few out there. Um, there, you know, there's some that we, we have even put a small, um, you know, sujuk? Yes. Yeah, we have sujuk as well. Obviously, we got it from you guys. <laughs> so we, we slice a small piece just to give you that, that flavor. 
-hmm. and that taste. And we put it together with the potatoes, and that's really nice. Let's see if I, I don't know, Cody, Cody was probably thinking, mmm, sounds very delicious. What, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's have a look if we can find some images for you. Um, yeah, this is the common, some common, um, this is the flat one, so I'll quickly screen share that for you. So usually this is, it looks like, like a pie, right? This is a common one which we make, something like this. And see this one's got cheese inside, I believe. Is this how you make it as well in Turkey? Yeah, obviously it says Turkish, yeah. Yeah, this is the common one. Servet, right? I cannot see something. Can you see the picture? I'm not seeing. No. Oh, I'm screen, screen sharing it. Oh, Holly, it takes a few seconds. I might have to wait. Can you see it? No. Not yet. Nothing. Gee, so slow today. In the blue chat or in Colingo chat? No, no, it's, I'm screen sharing it. I'm screen, no, I'm screen. I see now abstract thing, <laughs> like abstract picture. Yes, from Kandinsky. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Do you see my, my, my background picture or what? No. Is a lot of nothing? of rectangular um, color. Yeah, okay. pixel. Like Let me, Do you see, you see me pixel. now? Can you see me? Yes. Do you see my video? Yeah. Okay, let me do it again. You see it now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this the shape they usually make, Servet? They usually don't make the shape, but some people, I guess, at least my mother does it, don't, my mother doesn't do the shape. They just put it on top of each other, uh, like paper. Uh, like layers. Mm, yes, yes, yes. But so they there you go, the it's many. Well. Yeah? I guess it depends which part of Turkey also you're from. Then they're very different regions that like make it differently. Um, mm. Yeah, this is the Bosnian style usually, like I said before. So I go like that. It's got meat inside. And Yeah. Oh, I'm really hungry now. <laughs> I gotta have this for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I'll I'll let you um, guys see what it looks like, especially caught up probably you haven't seen it before. Um, but yeah, so this is I was telling Sergio this is something which I was uh, which I prepared when I met Sakina and I was teaching her how to you know make it because the actual the dough the pastry is very difficult to be. Um, uh, made because you have to you prepare it yourself, you mix the flour with the water and then you have to stretch it. Obviously you have to stretch it onto a whole table surface, the surface of the table. And then it has to be really thin and then when you put the ingredients on top and you start folding it and rolling it and then cutting it. So the pastry is the most difficult which uh, non-Bosnians seem to always struggle with. Uh, so any, yeah? Do you make the dough on your own or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, don't make the, they don't make the dough generally. People buy, buy them because you need to open oh. the thin. Yeah, we, we make it from scratch. We make it, we get all the raw ingredients and we just make everything from scratch. And it's even better if you grow your own vegetables and like the onions in, in, the, in the backyard and if you have it with the tomato, tomatoes, tomatoes and then it's really really uh, like a proper homemade uh, you know dish. Um, yeah so anything that you make guys what's your special specialty? Koro what do you like to make? I can cook a lot of things um, I cook very, favorite? very well. <laughs> Meat, fish, mm, paella, vegetables. Mm. 
I can nice. cook all. <laughs> yeah. So you're very, very um, skilled when it comes to cooking. Yes. <laughs> nice, nice. And servet? Anything you like to prepare? I I can only do cheek after and a traditional food. Other things are basic things. I can't teach you. <laughs> Sorry, what's the main thing that you do? It is cheek köfte, don't, don't you know? Oh, köfte, yes, 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 yes. Köfte, yes, mmm. Nice. These balls, no? Yeah. Is it like, mmm, ah, oh, yes, yes, very it nice. It is called, like, raw meatball. It is not, this is basically the main ingredient is, ingredient is bulgari. Bulgari, uh, garbant. spices. Mm. Mm -hmm. Meat as well. Mm. I do it all the time because it requires some power. Usually, women do it, but not all all the time because it is a bit tiring. Yeah. I can do you want to cook it? I can teach you the recipe. It is nice. Yeah, if you have it, have you got it handy? The recipe. Can Give it to, to me in yeah, uh, the chat. If it's too much hassle, then maybe for ne prepare it for next time, and then you can paste it maybe tomorrow, or if you don't have it handy now. But I'd love to hear no, how to they Generally, they don't measure it according to, mm -hmm. like, they look at the ingredients, and they put the mm -hmm. spices. They don't measure it generally. So you have to trust your... Instinct, self. yeah? Yeah, instinct. Mm -hmm. If you are willing wow. to do it, I can find the recipe. Yeah, definitely. Please, oh, maybe I can do a, prepare a surprise dinner here. Yeah. <laughs> do it. It is so good. You know, I'll be happy. Sometimes guests are coming and I cook it. Mm -hmm. And Koro also, I don't know if you want to, you got, you got plenty of recipes probably to share. <laughs> Can you can you think of one easy one you you, you want to share with us? Yeah, one for breakfast, Coro. Yeah, nice. Sorry. One famous easy Spanish food for breakfast. For breakfast, we can eat croissants or curasans or curasanes. <laughs> uh, a toast or but a very typical thing is bread with a uh, Oil and tomatoes. Ah, so bread, oil, and tomatoes. Tomato. Ah, and you use what kind of oil? Just normal vegetable oil? Or sunflower yes, oil? Um, olive, 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 olive oil. Olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, olive oil, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a nice, healthy breakfast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit of cheese. Would you put like some maybe fat cheese? No, here and no. no. So you don't do I that? have here. One moment. So I am sharing in the chat. David. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. It's very oh, healthy. I I see there's some of these cheese as well. Yes, it's cheese, you are right. But normally it's only uh, a small content from tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. So you can use like a... a to like tomato. mermelade. Like, yeah, uh, like a tomato spread. We, we call yes. it Ivar. Ivar. Is that, what do you call it in Turkish? Is it Ivar as well? Ivar? I don't know what you're saying. We say Ivar. I it's made of pa paprikas and tomatoes. It becomes a paste. It's mm -hmm. made into a paste. Something so, yes. Anyways. Oh, that's good. Yeah? It's very healthy. Yeah, I can see. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice breakfast. Maybe you can have some egg on the side as well. Yeah, but that is not so typical. The first one is the typical, or the second mm. one. I see it. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Thank you very much for sharing <laughs> that. That's going to be my next breakfast. All right, so that's, Yeah, very Mediterranean. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> um, okay, let's start the class. Um, tell me, why do you study English, guys? 
What's the main reason to study English? Mm. I am studying English because I am trying to have a better or the, I, uh, work. I speak German and mm -hmm. I need to speak English. And I hope with uh, that with the two languages I have I will have a better work or that yeah. I work. Yeah, you'll have a better chance of finding yes. uh, mm -hmm. better work. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. And Servant, why do you study English? I don't know. I have already answered this question 30 times. I know. <laughs> I s I've been studying English to be more cultivated. Mm. It's good. So you, you heard the question many times and it's good. You're giving me uh, different answers. I mean, trying to um, elaborate more, which is good. So, okay, that's a good answer. And so it's either to to benefit you, obviously it's going to benefit you in some way. Um, some might say just for fun, you know. Some might say it's a hobby. I like languages. Um, um, some usually the case is like to increase my chances in finding work. Yeah. So basically, what we're doing now is advanced prepositions, as you know, two and four. So I study English. Um, to become more fluent. Yeah? Uh, I studied for work purposes and so on. And now, you know, when natives pronounce for, especially in this, in this situation, uh, being a, 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 an advanced preposition, we don't necessarily pronounce it fully. We don't say for. We shorten it. Can you, um, Sevet or Kore, can you give me an example of what I'm what I'm saying? Mm. So the vowel, yeah. yeah, the vowel would change slightly. Yes, go ahead. Kore is learning English for work. Ah, good. Yes. For work, mm -hmm. good. So basically, the, the the vowel will become shorter. It changes. So if you were to pronounce it normally, like in this example here, I deeply apologize for my mistakes. For example, now usually you don't pronounce "for" like that in this sentence. Uh, a native would say, "I deeply apologize for my mistakes." So you join it with the with the following. Um, word or words, and four becomes very short. So four, or four. I deeply apologize for my mistakes instead of for my mistakes. Yeah. So this is something which uh, it's it's very common with native speakers, and you're gonna sometimes you, you can hardly even hear it. Um, uh, so another one with the with the two uh, to win the prize. Uh, to be a lawyer, so you don't say to be a lawyer, you say to be a lawyer, to, to, to you spitting it out. Uh, for being insensitive, for forgetting to pay my bills. We said this before, I think. For forgetting to pay my bills. This is a bit tricky because there's four, four, yeah? So for, for forgetting to pay my bills. Um, okay, so quickly I want you guys to just say this. I think you've perfected it last time. So, Selvet, can you read those, please? To win the prize for being insensitive, to be a lawyer, for forgetting to pay my bills. Mm, perfect. Well done. And Koro? To win the prize for being insensitive, to be a lawyer, for forgetting to pay my bills. Mm. It's good. Just try to say it a bit more. Um, fluidly, like fluently, so for forgetting, it flows, it's like one mm -hmm. word, 
for forgetting, for forgetting to, to pay my bills. Excellent. For being insensitive. For being insensitive. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's good. So um, now, when do we use these? How do we know? So let's let's look at these again. The actual description in the grammar and examples that we're going to use. Um, <clears throat> Um, so, so there are simple rules for these. There are prepositions of place, prepositions of time. However, there are also more advanced uses for some prepositions. Uh, so we're going to focus on two and four. So verb plus two, verb plus four. So I like to and uh, known for and so on. And so there are many uses of these constructions. Um, but we have to keep in mind not to get confused. So, for example, let's think, let's think about the difference between using want to versus using want alone in a sentence. So, I want some ice cream as compared to I want to get some ice cream. The difference here mainly is that you're, you're throwing in another verb, right? So, I want to get some ice cream. So, we can't say I want to get some ice cream. You have to change that. I want better communication. I want to learn advanced English. So you slightly change the, the sentence, but it has the same meaning. So two, <clears throat> um, so there's always, so the following categories include uh, verbs that are commonly preceded by two. So willing to and refuse to represent the, uh, the interest. Want to, like to, prefer to, object to is the desire. Uh, intention would be I plan to, I intend to, I prepare to. Yeah? And obligation, have to and need to. So sometimes we get them mixed up. Uh, it's not too bad. It's okay. It's not a big mistake or something you need to be concerned about. And, um, but it's good to know the difference. So the way to construct it is having the subject first and then plus the verb, plus two, and then the verb phrase. So I intend to watch. I intend to watch every episode of Lost. He prefers to work at home. And the verb after two must be base form, okay, infinitive. So work. Uh, I refuse to drink coke, not I refuse to drink coke. So it stays in the base form of infinity. And some of these verbs must be used with two plus verb phrase or an adverb, and some don't. So I replied to the customer, or I replied quickly, and not I replied poor. You know, some students I've heard they they say I replied Paul without using to, which is not correct. And some of these verbs, uh, if used in the present, must be used in the present continuous. So you can also use the ing form. So I am willing to wake up early for work. I'm preparing to graduate this year. <clears throat> okay, so you can use it in many forms. And now moving on to four. Um, the following categories include verbs that are commonly preceded by for. So, happy for, sad for, sorry for, excited for. This is feelings. Purpose for action would be look for, pay for, wait for, cook for. So, Sarah's going to cook some nice burek for us. Yeah? Or what will you cook for me tonight? Yeah. Description, famous for, popular for, or known for. Yeah. Uh, and to construct it, we have the subject, and then the verb to be, plus adjective, plus for, and then the phrase at the end. So he's famous for his good looks. He's famous for being in a new movie. I'm happy for you. 
don't feel sorry for me. I'll be okay. And uh, another way of constructing is by having the subject, verb, for, and then a noun. Or noun phrase without any verbs following that. So I paid for my tuition in advance. My mom cooked for 20 guests. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything's about cooking. <laughs> Making me more hungry. Making me hungrier. All right, so. <clears throat> Who wants to give an example? Use four and then use another sentence with two. So I'll give you the freedom to choose either feelings, purpose of action, or description. Spain is famous for its delicious paella. Ah, <laughs> lovely. Yes. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Got mm, I am cooking for the friends from Colingo. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> lovely. Mm. That's good. Now, what about two? It's too good to... No. I have to learn a lot of grammar. Yeah, that's an obligation. Yes, excellent. I have to learn a lot of grammar if I want to... Um, you know, speak better English. Yes. Good. We look at various foods, pictures, mm -hmm. to feel more hunger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To feel more hunger. Mm -hmm. Well, it, does that fit into our, our what's it called, um, our purpose here? It should fit. Like, you know, when you have a verb prior to the, the preposition. Did you have a verb directly in front of the preposition? Mm -hmm. Yes. To feel more hunger, to feel, to feel. But before the two? Yes. We, was there another one before? Yes, we look at various foods, pictures, mm -hmm. to feel more hunger, or to torture us, to torture ourselves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so look. Um, but in this case, the preposition that's linking look is look at. Right? So mm -hmm. look doesn't actually link to. If you say we look to, it will change the meaning. Maybe you can throw in another verb here to just before to. What about this one? Which one? Sorry. See like the, yeah. Try to throw that in the server and see if you can rephrase it. I like to... I like to... Look at... Can, yes. Food. I like to look at food pi pictures mm -hmm. to torture myself. <laughs> 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 or to increase my appetite, yeah, or to get an appetite, yeah, that's good, good, okay, that's a nice sentence, all right, so, um, what if you wanted to make a sentence with an intention, mm -hmm. 
Mm. I am planning to go to other country to work or to yeah. working? To work, no. I'm planning to go to another country mm -hmm. to work, or to work, yes. Mm -hmm. Good. So here you've used I am G, yeah, which is good. And you used I am. Excellent. I'm planning to go to another country for work or to work or to find a job. <laughs> Servet, have you got one? Intention. Mm. Mm. I or Stuart Birds all birds plan to immigrate to south mm -hmm. uh, in winter. Yeah. Good. They always plan to immigrate. Yes, absolutely. So the birds always plan to immigrate to to the south in winter. Or you can even use prepare, right? <clears throat> yes. Our plan is okay. Good, good. Mm. Yeah, I think we got it. So just keep those in mind, how to use them. And um, let's do this article. Are there any questions about that at all? No. No, it's all good, yeah? Right, so let's have a look at what happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So, killer robots with automatic rifles could be on the battlefield in five years. This is one of them. Swords. A previous generation of weaponized robots had its combat duties uh, curtailed uh, when it made movements without being given a command. Hmm. So this is one problem, I guess. So let's read this quickly. So, robots armed with automatic weapons, anti-tank missiles, and even grenade launchers are marching, uh, rolling ever closer to the battlefield. Now that they've shown they can actually hit what they're supposed to. Four robotic companies, HDT Robotics, iRobot, Northrop uh, Grumman, and Kinetic. Uh, recently ran their M240 machine gun armed uh, robots through a live fire demo at Fort Benning in what has been dubbed the robotic rodeo. The point was to give uh, the brass a chance to see just how viable such systems are. The army, which issued a favorable assessment of the technology last week, doesn't see our armed robotic overlords as weapons taking the place of, of boots on the ground, but rather as combatants working alongside troops in the field. They are not just tools, but members of the squad. That's the goal. Lieutenant Colonel Willie Smith, Chief of Unmanned Ground Vehicles at Fort Benning told Computer World. A robot becoming a member of the squad, we see that as a matter of training. Senior Army officers attending the rodeo appeared satisfied with the robots after seeing them accurately hit targets 500 feet away, and they hope to see battle, uh, battle bots in action within five years. We were hoping to see how they remotely control lethal weapons, said Smith. We were pleased with what we saw here. The technology is getting to be where it needs to be. This isn't the first time 
The Pentagon has played with weaponized robots, but earlier experiments proved such machines weren't ready for prime time after some of them moved without commands. Northrop Grumman's uh, Camel, or Carry All Mechanized Equipment Land, Land Rover, among the armed robots at the rodeo, can be fitted with automatic weapons, anti tank missiles, and gra uh, grenade launchers. It can run for more than 20 hours on three and a half gallons of fuel, according to the company, and carry a load of 1,000 pounds. It also can produce power to charge batteries or power other systems. Camel is a multifunctional or multifunction platform that can quickly transform from supporting troops to protecting troops as an armed wingman, increasing the firepower of dismounted platoon and company maneuver units, said Phil uh, Coker, uh, director of the integrated platform solutions business at Northrop Grumman's information systems sector in a statement. Its hybrid engine allows the armed camel to operate very quietly, a real plus on the battlefield, and travel farther to provide firepower where it's needed. So you can have a look at a brief video. It's less than a minute, if you'd like. It's just basically in action, shooting at these targets. So, are you guys watching the video? No, we can't see. Okay, one moment. Yeah, if, if you like, you can quickly see. Okay, it. one moment. Okay. Seven, are you done? Yes. I have seen it. Okay, you've seen it. Okay, were there any words here with yes. which were unfamiliar? Yes. Which ones? Sorry? Any words which you didn't understand? Yes, the text, uh, more or less, yes. Mm. One moment. When they say the army which issued a favorable assessment of the technology, it means army think it's problematic when army issues. What does issues mean in this context? Um, paragraph, you can find this. All right, the third one. Paragraph. Army which issued a favorable assessment of the technology last week. Um, well, like a positive, they issued a positive assessment, right? They issued as in they released uh, the results, you know. Not necessarily the result, but the assessment was, was favorable and they released it uh, of this technology. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's saying it's not going to replace, uh, you know, the soldiers, but rather it's going to be accompanying them. So, but rather as combatants working alongside troops in the field. So it's going to be there with the troops, helping them and all that, assisting them, not necessarily replacing them. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so yeah. launchers. Yeah. yeah, grenade launchers like um, almost like a um, mortar or like a bazooka, you know, mm. I don't know, RPG, whatever they call them. Yeah. So. I think it probably would be located somewhere on the side. You know. oh. Depends. Basically, it fires grenades, you know. And yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, any other words? Mm. Curry tail under the picture description. It's combat do this curtailed. Oh, let's see. A previous generation had its com uh, combat duties curtailed. All oh, right, as in um, it made it movements. Basically, it was um, prevented or it was stopped because. It did something which it uh, wasn't supposed to do. Like it's saying here, where it uh, made movements without being given a command. So the robot, you know, was thinking on its own basically. Yeah. Yeah. It did, did something without being told to do. Um, so it was like stopped. Uh, it didn't go any further into. Um, they didn't uh, put it into action. You know. Yes. Yeah, it was restricted in a certain way. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so if there are nothing, if, if there are no other ones, let's ask some questions. So now, thinking or keeping our grammar skill in mind, two and four prepositions. Mm -hmm. Why is the Pentagon? <clears throat> Uh, why is the Pentagon interested in weaponized robots? <laughs> so it's, the answer is definitely here in the article. They, I guess they are interested in weaponized robots to assist uh, soldiers on the ground. Mm -hmm. and yes. protect them when, when necessary. <coughs> uh, absolutely, yes, very good. <coughs> On the other hand, I expect robots to be more accurate when it comes to shooting mm -hmm. uh, targets. Yep. So what's the general purpose of having more robots on the battlefield? Maybe to reduce casualties. Excellent. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm after. Yeah. The main purpose really is to reduce the casualties. And of course, to assist the soldiers <clears throat> on the ground. Have you got any another answer, uh, um, Koro? No. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. okay. So, what have earlier experiments proved about these machines? Or proven, rather. Mm. Hello? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the first um the first mm -hmm. um, effect was satisfied because they accurately hit targets five hundred feet away. 
por ejemplo. Yes. Mm. Is, is that actually talking about this particular experiment or are they talking about it earlier? Right. I think that what, you, what you're saying is this particular one that we've just seen or read. But uh, did they mention anything about earlier experiments in the past? You are asking about the second paragraph, no? Um, no, this is not talking about um, the experiment which was done uh -huh. with these four com four companies, four robotic companies. That's that's now, right? Or during this time, the article. Uh, but before that. They've done other experiments. What happened in the past? Were they successful or were they not successful? Yes. This is I I understand now. They in the they proved that uh, the machines weren't ready for prime time after some of them moved without commands. Excellent. Yeah. So they weren't ready mm -hmm. for the you know mm -hmm. for the real action or for the prime time, like they say, because uh, you know some of them moved without being given a command or without you know having received a command. So they had to sort of. Like we say, curtail it or restrict them. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, why why is Northrop Grumman's camel robot so popular? I think that was the most popular out of the four. So why is the camel robot because so popular? Very Mm. Fast. It can run for more than twenty hours on three point five gallons. And yes, mm, there more it, uh, can produce power to change batteries or power other systems. Yes, multifunction platform. Good, good. Just pick that up well. So you could also start the sentence. How, or how else could you start the sentence? Serve it. Oh, how else could you start this answer? Uh, this camel robot is so popular for its Good. Uh, capability of moving long distances with uh, only 3.5 gallon fuel and carrying various sorts of weapons including mm. tank missiles, grenade launchers, mm -hmm. etc. Excellent. Very good. Yeah, so you could start it by saying uh, the camel robot is known for or is famous for its um, or is famous for abilities like you know carrying or being able to carry uh, many weapons, you know, and you know to to run for travel for more than twenty hours on a three and a half gallon or three and a half gallons of fuel. Yeah, excellent. Uh, and finally, why is Camel's hybrid engine so unique? Because it's quiet mm -hmm. and frugal, and it also mm -hmm. charges other systems while advancing in the battlefield. Yes, good. 
<clears throat> good answer. And basically, you know, the same. You can you can uh, start the answer just like the previous one, yeah. Yeah. So you could say that it's um, known, or its engine. Sorry, its its um, hybrid engine is known for you know this, this, and that, or it's famous for its ability to do this and that. Yeah. Its hybrid engine allows the arm camel to operate very quietly. Yeah, it's a big plus for on on the battlefield. You can sneak up to the enemy, you know, and you know, just unleash its um, power. Okay, that's good. So let's before we end, we have four minutes left. So I'll quickly ask you, I'll give you a word, and you just give me a sentence using our about the grammar skill. So, Koro, I'll begin with you. Okay, I'll give you a word. Uh, preferred. I prefer to to dance instead to go to fitness. Fitness club, maybe. Yes. So I prefer to dance mm -hmm. instead of uh, going to the fitness club. Yes. Good. Good. Excellent. And. Okay, I'll give you one more. Uh, happy. Hold on, here's another one for you. Happy. I am happy to to be healthy. Good, I'm happy to be healthy. Nice, nice and easy. Yep. All right, thank you very much, Koro. Thank That's you. Good. No mistakes. And Servet, do you want to say something, Servet? Should not we say I am happy for something? Um, you can say happy. I'm happy too as well. Depends what you're trying to say. If you want to use for, you can say I'm happy uh, for being healthy. Yeah. Then you have to use ing in this case. So both are okay in this case. Yeah, but if you want to say I'm ha I'm happy. I'm happy for be healthy, that doesn't go. Yeah. Then you have to use two in this case. I'm happy to, I'm happy to be healthy. Okay. Okay, so here's your word. Uh, willing. Again, willing. It always comes to me. Really? Did you have that last time as well? Willing is my <laughs> uh, inevitable assessment question. For real? <laughs> Okay, yes. should I give you another one? I'll give you another no, one. You <laughs> I'll give you another okay. one. I am willing to use willing in my assessment questions <laughs> or answers. Once more. Okay. Good, good. But I understand your your um, your reasoning. So I'll give you another one. Refuse. Ah. <laughs> you can use it in the same sentence. <laughs> I refuse to. I refuse to using willing one more time. So Alan gave me <laughs> another one. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to use willing. Yes, yes. But good, you you get the drift. You uh, you understand the, <laughs> the grammar. It's you're gonna be dreaming about it. Yeah. Okay. What about um, okay, since we spoke about food so much, what are you going to cook for us? Me? Cook, yeah, use cook in your sentence. Mm -hmm. I am not going to cook this time. You are going to cook chick after for us this time. You should cook. <laughs> you never cook. <laughs> I All right, I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to cook for you some. I'm going to cook, or I'm going to prepare. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna cook for my students, but you're not living here, so I, I can't even invite you guys, unless cook I eat in front of you. Cook for Zenadine, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can make some eggs for him. He doesn't need anything else but eggs. <laughs> you should, um, you should uh, ease him into Turkish food. That's why I'm telling you. Should. Yeah, I should make some nice uh, burek or. 
Yeah, John, get, oh, there's a recipe. You've given it to me already, haven't you? In the previous one, the Chikofta. Yes, you should. You should cook it for Zenadine. Yeah, I'm going to try and prepare it. I'm going to see if I can find the right recipe for it. Oh, but it, you said it takes a lot of effort, doesn't it? <clears throat> it takes a lot of effort, but it requires like a real man to cook it. Can you handle it? <laughs> yeah. Am I a real man? <laughs> yes, I think I'll prepare it. So it goes well with nice uh, like lemon and, and salad next to it, yeah? We eat it with salad or with you know iron, yogurt plus yes, water. Yes, that... mm. or there's also one thing more. It's called shalgam in Turkish, but let me find it if it has an English translation. It is if you have never eaten it, it's a bit heavy. So you oh, should really? you should put it like an appetizer, maybe like only one plate, you can eat okay. a few. Turnip, do you know turnip? Yeah, uh, yeah, turnip, yeah. yeah. But, uh, the, as a beverage, not oh. uh, as a vegetable. No. I see. Yeah, yeah. People drink it with it. It goes well. You should try it. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, I can see. <clears throat> Some images of people making this chick kofta. <laughs> we see <these> big men <laughs> in their singlets, really pressing hard at it. <laughs> but do you like spicy food? It is spicy. Yeah, I don't mind spice. That is. How about work together? How about other dwellers at home? They like spicy food. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they are. Well, my son doesn't really like his. You know, like, oh, it's spicy. So he doesn't really get into it. He, he's very. Um, he doesn't have his Indian blood. <laughs> on his mom's side, he's got. He's got father's. He's got his father's genes. Even though I like spicy, but I don't know. Anyway, look, guys, I don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> Get you even hungrier. <laughs> yeah. I do. I'm, I'm gonna go have breakfast. I'm really hungry now. <laughs> All right, time to make some chick of All right, guys, have a lovely day. Thanks okay, thank you very much. You're welcome anytime. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.